There are some secret numbers you need to be aware of and work to if you want to become a successful trader. How do I know this? Because I know that one of the largest brokers in the world did a massively in-depth analysis on all of their retail traders and the results were interesting to say the least. I'm going to tell you what those were in a bit. Not only were they interesting, but they revealed that the way that we teach our students here at Star Trading is exceptionally good. By having them focus on these three magic numbers, we keep them safe and way more profitable than the majority of other traders. Now in this video, I'm going to be revealing those numbers to you and I'm going to be sharing with you how you can implement them in your own trading as well. My name is Lewis Crompton and this is not financial advice where we talk all things trading, personal finance and how to live your best life. And if you want to make more money in less time while having more fun in life, then this is the channel for you. Make sure you like this video, you subscribe to the channel and you turn on alerts for when we release our videos twice per week. Now, as always, I have a free gift for you in the description of this video, which is going to dramatically speed up your journey to mastering money and the financial markets as well. So make sure you check that out. Now, maybe you are brand new to trading or maybe you have been attempting to master this skill set, and for whatever reason, you just can't get it to work for you. You can see other people trading and making money. So what is is it that they are doing that you are not doing? They may not be working harder than you, may not be putting in as many hours as you, they may even be working less than you to master this trading thing. Personally, I trade less than 30 minutes per day and so do the majority of my successful trading mentees as well. This is low time commitment once you know how. And there are certain numbers that we teach our mentees that are highly important for you to focus on if you too want to be successful like them. Number one, risk to reward ratio. Now risk to reward ratio is about how much you are risking on a trade versus how much potential profit you can make on that same trade. Now this one is really key and is one of the primary things that I use to keep my mentees safe in the markets. I wanna be really clear here. A one for one risk to reward ratio is the minimum that we go for. Ideally, we want more reward than our potential risk, but one for one is the minimum, not the goal. Always say that really clearly, it's not the goal, it's the minimum. Now this means that if we're risking 100 pounds on a trade, we should stand to make back at least 100 pounds as well. That is the minimum. We would prefer to be risking 100 pounds in order to make back a potential profit of 200. And when I say minimum, I don't mean the cash minimum, I mean the risk to reward minimum. This is where the likelihood of ending up as a profitable trader is put firmly in our grasp. If you maintain a minimum one for one, risk reward, then your trading will only have to win 50% of the time. And that means you're losing half the time as well. But even at that ratio, you'll still break even, you won't lose money. And that is why we do it this way. Number two, win loss percentage, which simply means the percentage of the time that your strategy is winning. A very important thing to know, right? Well, you'd assume so. Now, if you don't have a strategy that is clearly defined, you're gonna really struggle to make this work for you. And by this, I mean the whole trading thing. If you don't have a clearly defined strategy that you follow every time you place a trade, then what you're actually doing is you're giving yourself different strategies with different results, with different inputs, so you're never gonna be able to measure the output correctly. That is a recipe for trading confusion and ultimately losing money in the markets, which is what I'm trying to help you avoid doing. When you have a clear strategy and when you stick to it, you can track the outcomes with way more clarity and way more certainty. You may be wondering, what is a good win percentage to be aiming for and that's a very, very good question to ask. And there is, in my experience, and in my opinion, from nearly 10 years of successful trading, where the heck has that time gone, I don't know, there is no such thing as the 100% winning strategy. It doesn't exist. And if you can be consistently hitting 60% to 70% win rate, then that is really good, as long as you have the correct risk-reward number 
plugged in. So the third secret number to be aware of is trade frequency. And it should be obvious what this one is, right? So how often does this strategy that you are looking to trade actually give you a tradable opportunity in the markets that you're trading, whether that's Forex, stock shares, whatever it is. Now let's say for argument's sake that a 100% winning strategy did exist. It doesn't, but let's pretend just for a moment. And if you were to have a trade frequency on that strategy of once per year, then it really isn't gonna be a great trading strategy for you. It wouldn't be a high enough frequency for you to get the level of return of profit that you're gonna to want to see. So trade frequency is really important for knowing if a strategy is worth trading or not. Now, let me remind you again of that research piece that was done by one of the largest global brokers and what they found out. And this may actually surprise you. So the research piece looks at many, many thousands of retail traders. That is people who do not trade on behalf of institutions or banks or others, but they use their own capital for trading and they're making the money for themselves. Now, this research piece looked at all sorts of things, including these numbers that I've just talked about out too, but it obviously went into a lot more detail than just that. But through this research, they actually found that the majority of traders were winning more trades than they were losing. Let me say that again. The majority of traders were winning more trades than they were losing. You may think that doesn't make sense considering all the statistics about 70%, 80%, 90% of retail traders losing money and all the fear mongering that goes along with that. Well, if you are thinking that and you are questioning that and if you're thinking it doesn't make sense, you would be right. It doesn't make sense, none whatsoever, because how can the majority be winning more trades than they're losing, but at the same time, the majority are losing money? It really doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. Well, it doesn't make sense until we factor in one of our numbers that we've talked about. If we then look at those winning traders, we can see that many of them were still losing money. And the question has to be why? And the answer is because they were not using correct risk to reward. What these retail traders were doing, and these are the uneducated traders that lose money, is they were ignoring the principle of risk to reward. So I've told you the minimum risk to reward that you should go for is that one to one. But why? Because when we only need to win 50% of the time in order to break even, we're putting ourselves in a strong position. Now, these losing traders were not doing that. What they were doing is they were allowing their losers to continue longer than they should have done, probably not even using stop losses. And if you don't know what that is, please watch my content. And then they were cutting their winners short, just slashing them. Now this, by the way, all comes down to trader mindset and emotional management, which is point four of the star trading method, which is something we work on with our students and our mentees to make sure they're trading as best as they can. The fear of giving back money to the market caused retail traders to cut winners short so that they can bank and hold on to the profit that was there. I bet some of you watching this video have done just that. The fear of not having a winning trade caused them to lose more money in the hope that the market would turn and start to move in their favor. Now, one of my business mentors always tells me, hope is not a good strategy. It is the same with your trading. Hope is not a strategy. Tested data is. So if you have not tested a clear set of trading strategy rules and criteria, like all of the strategies that I trade have been, then you have no business being in the market. If you want to be like the majority, that is losing money trading, then do what the majority do. They lose money. They blame the market. They don't have clear strategies. They won't pay for expert help and they try to do it all themselves. But if you want to be in the minority of successful traders, and do what they do. Get around other traders like me. Pay for education and support. Test clearly defined strategies and stick to the magic numbers. Without knowing, using, and sticking these three numbers on the strategy that you are trading, you are essentially going into the market completely blind. And that is never, ever a good thing. You wouldn't cross a busy road with your eyes shut. So why enter the market without the foresight you need to be successful with a strategy. In the description of this video, for a little thank you gift, I've put in there some resources for you, helping you to make progress with your trading. So make sure that you check that out, that you like the video, you subscribe to the channel, and you share this video with somebody you think it will help. My name is Lewis Crompton, and this is not financial advice.